You can think about it. You can watch someone else do it, but don't do it yourself. It's a bad fucking idea. Destroy the ever living boo boo stain out of that subscribe and like button. I don't know why the hell I'm bleeding subscribers all the time. It's probably just the YouTube algorithm fucking me in the butt a little bit so we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. I had someone comment on my video from uh, last night that was like, what happened to the boo boo stain? There you go, pimp. Boo 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 stain. I'm gonna go to an event one day and I'm be like, bro, I beat you so bad I beat the boo boo stain on out you. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Uh, anyway, let's talk about why the hell you should not be investing in dark wing doo doo stain. Uh, because dark wing blast honestly just sucks ass. Like it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. And you know, it has to be somewhat expected, right? Like we're coming off of a set like Power of the Elements that just had good card after good card, TCG exclusive after exclusive, like it was freaking bananas. Darkwing Blast, I would say, is somewhere in the middle ground, but at the same time, that doesn't make it worth investing in, ladies and gentlemen. Like, <clears throat> yes, you have the Bystead cards, right? But those are for lack of a better term, single individual cards. Like the number one card I feel out of all of Darkwing Blast, minus the Starlight Rares for collector's purposes and things like that, is the Kashatri Fenir. And keep in mind that that card can search itself. It, it's basically a 2022 Cyber Dragon. The card's absolutely amazing. Now keep in mind, we get the rest of the Kashatri La, Shangri La shit archetype. I believe, don't quote me on that, I believe on in Photon Hypernova in like January of 2023. And that deck is possibly gonna be a tier one deck because just of all the shit that it can do, it can lock you out of your monster zones. Like Konami has to always make some sort of broken shit. Like we know it's gonna happen. It's how Yu-Gi-Oh is. Um, but this is the beginning steps to getting to that next tier one deck. And it's also a good card that you can just splash into just about any deck, quite honestly. But again, that's just one card. Now you could argue, well, Avery, I wanna get like a case or a couple boxes of Darkwing Blast to hopefully get those Bystead cards. But yet one of them is a secret rare that like out of all the 10 secret rares and it's Lubelion. The others I believe are Ultras and things like that. And that's just not really worth it to buy into a set. Uh, if you're gonna be a Runic player like myself, then you want to get three copies of uh, Fairy, Gary, wh whatever the hell it was. I, I forget the name off the top of my head. I think it was like Fangry. Well, anyway, it's the brand new fusion monster for Runics that has a hard once per turn that whenever it's destroyed by battle by card effect sent to the grave, you get a quick play spell from your grave back to your hand. So if you trigger the fountain and draw three, and then this fusion pops, then you're essentially drawing four because now you're going to have four quick plays in your hand, which is just... D absolutely disgusting. On top of having Gary to recycle your fountains, using Hugin to be able to protect the fountain or to search you one, it makes the deck really, really good. Like it just makes it better. Oh, and on top of that, it's a 2000 attack beat stick that, yeah, sure, no battle damage from either player, but anytime it's involved in a battle, it makes the opponent mill too. So another card that makes the mill that is a fusion that you can just deploy out multiple times if you have at least like three spells, like that's that's good. Play a spell, summon it, they attack, mill two, pops, no damage. They attack again, summon it out, it's 2,000 attack, so they need to have something with 2,000 or more to run over it, and then there's also no damage. Like, it's it's really good. Like, um, I, I was showing it off to a Valley D, and he's like, yeah, the card's kind of bad. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's a hard once per turn to get back a quick play, but it's also 2,000 attack. So that's a 2,000 body that the opponent has to run over if they don't have a way to pop it with a card effect. And even if they do, I'm just going to get back a quick play spell. Again, though, that's for something that's more rogue like Runic. Just buy the singles. You want to play Bised? Buy the singles. If you have a regional or a big event, YCS, whatever, that's right around the corner of Darkwing Blast, then yeah, maybe you want to buy a case or you know a couple boxes, whatever the case may be. Like if you're going to YCS Minneapolis, you're only going to have... Darkwing Blast legal for a couple of days, assuming that they're going to allow Darkwing Blast cards at the YCS because it's it's so close together. Um, you only have a couple days to get the cards that you need. So maybe you want to buy a case because you want to get those cards to be ready for the event, and that's fine. But if you're just going to locals, if you're waiting until November for the regional season like me, because I've got two regionals on back-to-back -back weekends, not until fucking November, that's why I'm playing Runic, because we're going to have the new Exchange of the Spirit Mill support by the time my regional happens, then just buy singles. Now, 
with Magnificent Mavens, I may even buy sealed product of that because that set's going to be pretty solid and good. And plus, you get a lot of bang for your buck, quite honestly. But to invest in Darkwing Blast, again, it's not a power of the element set. I really feel like you're losing money because even the Starlights, like the Starlights, I don't really feel like the Starlights are all that good in my humble opinion. Like you've got the Tier Element brand new fusion that's a Starlight. It's also a secret rare. Like unless you're trying to flex, like the Starlights aren't all that good. I kept my Ultimate Slayer Starlight for the longest time till the price started dropping like a rock uh, because it was a good card. Uh, now it's not really seeing a whole lot of play, so it's kind of fallen out of favor. You know, it, it, it wasn't another Triple Tactics talent. And so I feel like if you're going into this set with sealed product, you're not really going to get a lot back on your investment and you may not necessarily get a lot of overall good cards for whatever deck you're trying to play. The Bysteads are cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure that people here in the TCG will try and build a pure Bystead deck. Like even I think the OCG messed around with that concept for a little bit because the cards are cool. Like to this day, Albalos, that freaking 3300 attack beat stick, it looks like a fucking Final Fantasy boss or like something out of Live Alive. Really good RPG, by the way. Like it, it's cool. It is so damn cool. I love the artwork on the card. Like I want to get like a page full from my binder and get like nine of them and just show it off. But, I mean, I can get that out of packs at, like, my OTS store. Or I can just buy those singles. Like, I'm not worried about that. Really, what you should be more concerned about is, uh, like I said, the individual carp, the Kashat Refenure, the Bystead stuff, the milling support that we get in Magnificent Mavens. That's going to be the key set for this format. That's when you're really going to see a shift. Darkwing Blast brings a bit of a shift, but not enough until we get Magnificent Mavens, and then we hit that mill support, and then we see tier elements possibly being a tier zero deck. Now you're probably saying, well, Avery, I want to play Black Wings, which you do you, boo-boo. I don't think the deck is very good. I'm being fucking honest with you. Like, it's kind of booty booty butt cheeks. <laughs> like, I'm not seeing Black Wings do a damn thing in the OCG or even here in the TCG, but I could be wrong. People in the TCG, I don't know what the hell it is. People in the TCG love, as I heard someone say back in the day, they're Crack Wings. <laughs> like, I, I don't get it. I don't know if it's just because it was the first of its kind to have all these special summon extenders, like not once per turn and for free. I could give a rat's ass about the deck. Like I'm just not a Blackwing fan. And at the same time, I have to question what is it that makes Blackwing so appealing? Because last time I checked, Blackwing Dragon is not a good card. And technically it's not even technically a Blackwing card because it's winged, W-I-N-G-E-D, not Blackwing. And like, okay, it stops burning. So your Mystic Mind matchup is basically free. I guess, like they try and burn you and just like, no, Blackwing Dragon, bro. I don't know. I, I don't see it in Blackwings. I think that they got some cool tuners. Steam the Cloak is busted. Uh, but I just, I don't see it in Blackwings. So like, if you don't want to play Blackwings and even then you could probably buy a core on like tier zero games, which I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. You could probably buy a core off of them for like a hundred bucks is I don't think the Blackwing stuff is going to be that high of rarity. If it is, then, you know, whatever, 150 to 200 for a core. Uh, you know, you can buy the singles on TCG Player. If you want to be competitive and play like a tier one deck like Sprite or Tier Element, okay, Sprite got one new Link monster that is kind of an extender, even though it's just not as good as Elf. So it's kind of like, eh, do you really play it? If you're playing the Nimble Engine, then yeah. If not, eh, maybe not. And it's a secret rare. And it's like, I'm, I say that that card's going to be like around like what elf is. And that's like 10 to 15 bucks. Like it's, it's one card. Like it's, it's just sort of, eh. and I feel like that that really sums up this set as a whole, that it's just sort of, eh, it dropped. It's like a fart in the wind. It'll, it'll go away in a couple months. I feel that this is kind of like a blazing vortex set where you had some good cards, but it may not necessarily age well over time. Because, like, I mean, shit, Blazing Vortex boxes, I think, are, like, 50 to 55 right now. And, like, you had the Tri Brigade stuff. You had Pot of Prosperity. But then once that sort of died off, it's, like, there's no value in the set. And I feel like that's going to be the same thing for Darkwing Blast, you know? It's not introducing a lot of good things. All that insect stuff that they just showed off, that's in, like, Photon Hypernova. I'm pretty sure. And it's, like, even then, it doesn't really make it worth investing in. I just, I don't see it. I really don't. I say save your money. Buy whatever singles you want, whether you want to play Black Wings, Tier Element, whatever. 
once we get to Magnificent Mavens, just bust a load out of your wallet and spend money like crazy and get that mill support. You should also pick up Exchange of the Spirit too in case they don't reprint in that set because that stuff's going to be broken AF. So guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I wrong on this? There's just something I'm totally missing. I, I could be wrong. Please let me know all that more down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.